Hi, this is Brandon from Tate Talk Tech back here again with another video in the uh, QEMU KVM Virtual Machine series. Um, today I'm going to be covering Intro to Managing VMs. Um, so to go ahead and start off is I want to go ahead and explain to you the command that we're actually going to be using. And, and I mentioned this in the previous video, and that is going to be the Versh command. Essentially what the Versh command is, is it is a, um, it's an, it, it allows us to, it's a program that allows us to interact with the Libvirt API. What is the Libvirt API? Basically, it's a virtualization API that sits between uh, whatever application that you're, that is, that is being used and sits between that and QEMU, which is the actual machine layer, which then interfaces with KVM and the kernel layer, which then interfaces with the uh, hardware. So really, this is the way that you have it here is you have Versh, and then it's going to interact with Libvirt. Oh, let's actually put that as API. And then you'll have, that'll in turn um, interact with QEMU, which in turn interacts with uh, KVM, which in turn will interact with the actual hardware of the machine. So what this is really gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to manage these virtual machines directly from the command line. You know, the other versions of this, uh, the other versions of this type of application are going to be Vert Manager, which is a GUI application, and then there's also Vert Install, which is another means of interacting with LibVert, but all of these have in common, what all of these have in common are is they interact with the LibVert API to be able to go ahead and do everything that you're gonna need to do to manage your virtual machines. Now, um, Libvirt is an op is an open source API. I think the website is I think it's Libvirt. It is Libvirt.org if you want to learn any more information about uh, this particular application. Um, it's a it's an open source API daemon and management tool for managing platform virtualization. Uh, can interface with many different virtualization platforms, so you could actually um, use really any other type of. Um, you, when, when you're talking about um, these APIs, is you, um, any I'm sorry, not these APIs, but these applications, it can be any other type of program. You know, like VirtualBox or VMware Player can be used to interact with the Libvirt. Uh, the libvert daemon and that's really what's allowing you to be able to manage it because if not then you would have to manually manage it through QEMU which some people do but is a little bit more difficult and tedious than utilizing any of these other methods. Um, you can also enter well you can enter verse commands in two ways you can either go through just typing in verse and then the command like you know net list all right there we go. Or you could type in verse and go into like an actual the actual verse ter verse terminal, and then really here all you would do is just type in that list, and you would leave off the verse portion and type the commands in directly. Now there's a couple pieces of terminology that is associated with really just virtual machines and kind of the na the naming scheme uh, in general. One of those is going to be Node, which is a which is the physical host machine which is you know, the machine that you're gonna be running on, and then the domain is, is the virtual machine. So you'll hear, you'll hear us, you'll hear me and other people when it comes to KVM and QEMU referring to these sometimes as domains or a virtual machine, that is the exact same thing. A lot of the literature out there refers to it as a domain. So you wanna make sure that you're able to differentiate um, between a node and a domain and also know that domain um, equals a virtual machine. So, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and get into actually using the verse command. We're gonna go ahead and quit out of here. All right, let's go ahead and do the first one. So the first one is gonna be verse and then list, and then verse, list, and then tac tac all. Now, the difference between these two commands is the verse list is only going to show you your active your active virtual machines and the virtual list tac tac all will show you all of your machines. And you can see on this particular system that I have here, both of the machines that I have available are off currently. So 
that's why they're not showing in the verse list command. Now, if you want to go ahead and get information about your host system, you can do verse node info. All right, and that's going to give you some information about it. Let's just know we have 16 CPUs available, uh, x, x86 uh, 64 architecture, one CPU socket, eight. Um, there's uh, eight cores per socket, uh, threads per core, which is two, which is, you know, you take this times this, that's how you get the 16. Uh, and then memory size, that's going to be the memory that is available. This is in kibibytes versus kilobytes or megabytes. So this is roughly about 30, I think it's 30.9 uh, gigabytes because this is a 32 uh, gigabyte uh, system, but two of those are used for the integrated graphics on my processor. So in that, and again, we can see here that node info, node is the one is actually being used and that's referring to our actual physical host system. The other command is, the other command I wanna go over here to cut as in the intro is versh domain info and then the domain name, let's just do peppermint. Whoops, I typed that in wrong. Let me go ahead and fix that. What? One second here. Oh, my apologies. It is not domain, it is DOM info. And I think I actually used this command in the uh, previous video and didn't make that mistake, but you know, hey, we're all, I'm human. So all the rest of us, so all the rest of you. So uh, yeah, this is gonna give us, you know, like the name, the UUID, OS type, um, the state, CPUs, max memory. This is in kibibytes here. That's two, uh, 2,048 megabytes or, you know, two gigabytes. Uh, it is persistent. It Auto start is disabled. Manage save, no. Uh, security model, app armor, uh, security DOI zero, so. That'll give us some basic um, overview information about a domain. Now let's go ahead and kind of get into starting, rebooting, and stopping domains. So if you want to go ahead and start a domain, is you're going to just type in verse start and that domain name. All right, and then it'll kind of hesitate there for a second. Then it'll give you the output that domain uh, peppermint has started. Then let's go ahead and run a verse list. All right, we can now see that that is a running domain. Now, if we wanna go ahead and have that auto start, we could just do versh auto start peppermint. And we can see there domain peppermint marked as auto started. All right, so that that's basically what auto start is gonna do is every time you start up your machine, it's going to go ahead and start up this virtual machine. How you wanna manage that is solely up to yourself. I don't particularly, I don't, personally do it that way, but you know, to each their own. Um, then if you want to go ahead and disable it, what you can do is you can just do versh auto start tac tac disable and peppermint, the name of the domain. And there we go. Peppermint mark unmarked as auto started. So basically we have, we have disabled automatic start. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to shut down a virtual machine, and that's gonna be with Versh Shutdown. And the... All right, and you'll see that the output there is it's going to be shutting down Peppermint. So let's go ahead and just run Versh and see Versh List. And we can see now that it's gone, Versh list tac tac all and shut off okay school let's go ahead and start it again with a verse start peppermint all right there we go now when you do when you issue the shutdown command it's going to shut it down gracefully make sure all the processes have completed their task and, and all that kind of stuff now if you just needed to like shut down asap what you're going to do is you're going to do verse destroy and then the domain name And that's gonna shut it down, not gracefully. It's like, dude, stop. Right now, end. That is it. And it, if we run the Versh list, we can see that it's not there. Versh list, tac tac all. And we can see it right there, so perfect. We can still see that it's there. Cool, and if you need to reboot it, let's just first turn it on for Versh start. Peppermint, all right. And then let's do a Versh reboot. Peppermint. 
and we can and it's being rebooted. All right, cool, cool. So all right, so we've got we're gonna go ahead and just leave that leave that virtual machine running now. I want to go ahead and talk to you about removing a domain. Now, when you talk about removing a domain, they use a different first use a different terminology. It's going to use undefined. Now, you want to make sure to know what you want to do with the storage prior to using Versh Undefined. Because there's two ways that you can use Versh Undefined. You can use Versh Undefined and then the domain name. Or you can do Versh Undefined Tac Tac Remove Tac All Tac Storage which will go ahead and actually remove the storage. Now, if you do it without the remove all storage, that that uh, storage is going to stay there. Now, if you want to use that for another virtual machine, that is perfectly fine. But if you want to get rid of it and and, re and get that um, get that storage put back into your pool, you're going to want to use this approach, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We've got Debian 11 there, so we're just going to go ahead and just do that, and we're going to get rid of it. Perfect, there we go. And you can see there, uh, storage volume is not managed by Livert. Remove it manually. Uh, domain has been undefined. So I don't think that it, it looks like it may not have ls var lib lib vert images. Yeah, and it looks like it got it out of there. Even though it gave us that um, gave us that weird message there, and, but it did undefine it. So we've now we can see that there we've only got our our peppermint volume and then the lost and found that's there. So we have successfully removed that domain. Perfect. Um, all right. So now let's go ahead and talk about suspending and unsuspending domains. So basically when you're suspending a domain and resuming a domain, it's, it's basically gonna kind of like freeze it and it's going to, but it's not going to release the resources. So if you're, you know, if you have one core and you know, two gigabytes of, of resources allocated to that machine, it's going to go ahead and keep those allocated. So keep that in mind, but it's going to basically freeze it in time where it's at, you know, say if you, you know, need to, put it down like that, maybe do something to it and then bring it back up into resume state, something that you can do. You just want to make sure that it doesn't disrupt the disrupt what you're doing as you're doing it. You can use suspend versus resume. So, which is pretty easy. It's just verse suspend, and then you're going to do the domain name. In this case, it's going to be peppermint. All right. And perfect. We can see that. Let's just go do a verse list and we can see there that it is indeed paused currently so that's how we do know that it was successfully suspended and the way that we can go ahead and resume it is pretty simple just verse resume and then the domain name and peppermint is uh, peppermint domain peppermint is resumed now the next thing i want to show you is uh, saving and resuming a the state of a domain uh, which will shut the VM, which will shut the VM down and resume at the same state. So it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a it's kind of like a a hybrid between you know suspending a a domain and actually shutting down the domain. So if you want to go ahead and shut it down, get those resources back to your system, and um, but make sure that it saves the state. You're going to do this. Well, one of the things that I do want to let you know is when you when you do do it this way, what it's going to do is it's going to save a state file in the directory that you're in currently. So if you don't want to, if you want it saved in a particular file, then make sure that you'll designate that when you're actually using the command. And again, those resources will go back to the host machine. So, all right, so let's go ahead and run the command here. You're gonna do verse and then save is gonna be in the domain. Oops, not peppermint, peppermint. And then we're going to do the save file peppermint dot save. All right, so here we go. This is this version. And then save is going to be how you're going to basically suspend the, the virtual machine. You're going to put in the, the domain name, and then you're going to go ahead and define a state uh, a state file, which in my particular case is just peppermint dot save. Let's give it just a second here, and then domain peppermint save to peppermint dot save. Let's run a verse list. 
All right, we don't see it there. Let's go ahead and run a verse list tech tech all and we can see it there that it is indeed shut off now we want to go ahead and restore that keep in mind you could you could restart this back up as it was but um you know the normal way but the problem is is that if you just start it normally it's not going to go back to your safe state it's going to start as if you know it's starting fresh so keep that in mind so the way we the way we can go ahead and restore it is just pretty easy. Versh. Oh, and actually, let me show you the the save file here. And see here, we've got we've got the file right here, which is going to be uh, peppermint dot save. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is going to go versh, restore, and we're going to do the we're going to do the save file, and then domain restored from peppermint dot save. All right, now let's go ahead and look here. Let's just do an LS. We can see that it's still there. So if you want to go ahead and remove that, you can just do an RM, uh, RF, peppermint.save, and that will go ahead and uh, remove that. The other thing that we're going to want to go ahead and do is run a verse list, and there we go. Peppermint is running. Now, one of the other things that you can, you can uh, do to, you know, it was kind of a managing task is to rename your domains. Now, that's a pretty simple command. You're gonna be verse dom rename, and then you're gonna do the current name, peppermint, and let's just go to, let's just call it new, peppermint. Yeah, and see here, it gives us the error, request operation is not valid, uh, cannot resume a, Cannot uh, rename active domains. Let's go ahead and shut it down. First, stop peppermint. Actually, whoops. Destroy. All right, there we go. And then, sorry, I didn't. I don't know why I put stop in there instead of destroy. All right, so let's go ahead and. Verse dom rename peppermint. We're going to change to new peppermint. Successfully renamed, and we'll just do a verse list tech tech all. Ah! And there we go, we got a new peppermint now. Let's just go ahead and put it back. Verse a dom rename. New peppermint to peppermint, and that will not that will not change the name of the storage volume or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Now the last kind of, the last thing that I want to cover here is something that I covered in the last video, and I covered pretty much everything that I was going to cover in this one. But um, this is the guest agent. So essentially what that guest agent is, just um, if you haven't seen the last video, is this is an agent that runs inside the VM and acts as a means of communication between the hypervisor and the VM. Uh, it allows the hypervisor to get information about the VM or issue it commands. Um, on, the, on the actual virtual machine, again, you would use apt uh, install QEMU guest agent uh, to install it again on that virtual machine. And then you can start and enable it at boot with uh, system CTL start QEMU guest agent uh, and system enable QEM guest agent respectively. Uh, commands can be issued through the QEMU machine protocol, which is QEMP. Uh, I'm not gonna be covering that in this series, but I just wanted to go ahead and give that to you for uh, just knowledge purposes. Uh, you know, if you wanna go ahead and get more information on it, just type in QEMU uh, machine protocol or Q QEMP. Q MP protocol, and that will give you that will allow you to search for more information in regards to that. All right, so that's pretty much all I had to cover today. Um, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Uh, let me know what you like, what you didn't like, any ideas for future coverage, and um, leave a comment down below if you've got any other kind of feedback or just want to say hi. Um, if there's nothing else, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of the day.